Good day, and welcome to St. Agnes Parish. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter. We gather singing, sing a new song. Name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of the Father and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, we are privileged to gather in the name of our Lord to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Let us prepare our hearts to do this worthily as we take a moment to call to mind our sinfulness and seek the forgiveness of our merciful God. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those who are pleased to make new and holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the, the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the 12 called together the community of the disciples and said, it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith, and the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles, who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Praise is the song. 
a reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious. And whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that will make people stumble and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, the word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, what I have told you, that I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to Jesus, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to Philip, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, 
Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes the Word of God is, as we say, spot on. Let me just read the first verse of today's Gospel. Jesus says to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God. Have faith also in me. Our hearts are troubled. We Americans obviously remain highly concerned about the coronavirus, even as parts of our country have begun to reopen. Thank you, Lord. Recent polling indicates that 49% of us fear the economic effects of a prolonged period of quarantine more than the health threat posed by the virus. That's 45% of Americans. But the fact remains, we're afraid. And a certain level of anxiety is very understandable. We are living in challenging times, and for I think all of us living, or most of us living, unprecedented times in which concerns about rising unemployment, because we're, some, we're quite far beyond the um, Great Depression, access to health care, the possibility of an economic recession, they dominate the headlines. Loved ones are losing jobs. Small businesses are struggling, maybe closing, never to be open. Churches have to reevaluate how we do our ministries. Perhaps those in my, in your, my hearing or uh, watch or viewing this virtual mass You've lost loved ones or know someone who's lost loved ones because of the virus. So in this context, fear is a natural human reaction. But we Catholics need to think very carefully about the current moment and the important conversations taking place around us. In weeks ahead, we need to pray for those in authority, like the policymakers and the persons in the business world and the medical professionals, that they prayerfully or certainly thoughtfully, consider how to balance reopening the economy with protecting the health of the citizens, you and me. Now, we know what's happening. We hear it in the news. Unfortunately, there are always those who try to exploit a crisis, and this one included, by continuing to stir up fear. We've seen examples of state and local authorities going way beyond the boundaries of their proper authority and actually taking liberty with our liberties. Now the government has a vital role to play addressing this crisis, that's to be sure. However, we Americans don't want to be so fear-driven we place all our trust in the government. That's highly dangerous. Study history, my sisters and brothers. History shows us that's a dangerous path, very dangerous path that leads to loss of liberty. Think of Nazism. That's why we Catholics must be vigilant and place our ultimate trust in God. Reference to history is if you study the rise of the Third Reich, you can see how that could happen. People were in their desperation uh, would turn to such situations. Now the Bible frequently addresses fear. In fact, scholars tell us that the Lord in one way or another says to us, do not be afraid, I am with you, 365 times. 365, one for every day of the year except leap years. Okay. So why does scripture give so much attention to fear and its antidote in the word of God? Well, although you and I have been redeemed by Christ's death and resurrection, that's what we're celebrating now in a very special way in this Easter season, we still are affected by sin, aren't we? We still sin. We always need his forgiveness. And so it's our desire to be in control, to rely on our own resources. You know, many of us live much of our lives without consciously connecting them to God and to his will. So as a result, we don't experience a deeper peace and assurance of his love. Though unfortunately, we are often consumed with our own struggles and circumstances. And when the concerns of COVID-19 press upon us, it's easy to feel overwhelmed. When this happens, even faithful Christians and Catholics 
might be tempted to act on fear and not seek help in the, all the right places or seek help in the wrong places. So I'm thinking not just of watching how our government deals with this, but also addiction, drugs, alcohol, binge, watching other forms of entertainment that are mind-numbing or dangerous, okay? And so the consistent message of God, though, in the scripture is to remind us that no matter how difficult the trial may become, we must keep our eyes fixed on God. We must trust him even when difficult situations, we face those for his glory and our good. Keep our eyes fixed on God. Let's just visit another scripture. Matthew chapter 14. Jesus walking on the waters towards his disciples. They're in the boat rowing and just blowing and the waves are high. And when they see him walking on the ocean, the sea, sea of Galilee, it says in scripture, they're terrified and they cry out, it is a ghost. And they cry out in fear. But Jesus immediately says to them, take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. You want to take courage because it's, it's, it is I who are with you. Do not be afraid. I dispel fear, Jesus is saying. And that's, so that's one of the 365 times the scholars have noted that we have this do not be afraid. But let's continue the passage. So Peter says to Jesus, Lord, if it is you, command me to walk across water to you. So Jesus says, come. <laughs> come on, Peter. He gets out of the boat because to walk towards Jesus on the water and the wind's blowing and the waves are crashing. Then he begins to notice that. He goes, oh my, and sinks. So he cries out, Lord, save me. And Jesus puts his hands out, catches him, and lifts him and he and Jesus himself into the boat. And gently says, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt me? And then the wind dies down. So, as long as Peter kept his eye on Jesus, he could walk on water. <laughs> but once he took his eye off the Lord and noticed the wind and the waves, the issues around us, the coronavirus, all kind of other stuff going on, not just the virus, but all the other issues we face as a country and in our personal lives, we can sink. In the coming weeks, we Catholics do have a wonderful opportunity to model what sincere trust in God looks like. Though we face the same challenges as everybody else, we can have a peace and confidence that surpasses all understanding if we stay rooted in the character of God. He's trustworthy, he's faithful, he's always there. And his promises, I am with you, I am with you. Do not be afraid. If we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, not just all the concerns, worries, and fears we have, then we can, uh, in our own situation, plus all things that come to us in our various media and social media, if we just keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, we can make this, we can do it. And hopefully, when we look back on these times in the months and years to come, and there'll be months and years to come, we'll be able to see God's hand, his good hand of providence, the graces that are at work, and how these difficult days produced opportunities to live and proclaim the gospel that would not have been possible any other way. Just by our example of our lives, how we can face this with courage and trust and peace. It sends messages all over the place about the power of Christ in our life. So let's choose faith over fear and trust God to preserve and keep us on our, as we lean on him, love that song, lean on me, lean on him in these difficult days. What was the psalm response? What's the psalm response? What was it? Let your mercy be on us, O Lord, as we place our trust in you, right? We have our chapel back there. We have Sister Faustina, uh, Sister Saint Faustina Kowalska. What's that famous phrase she has? Jesus, I trust in you, okay? Other side of the triptych, the right side, there's John, uh, um, Pope St. John Paul II, who was a tremendous, uh, oh, he canonized Sister Faustina, and a great advocate of the, the divine mercy 
uh, med- um, devotion. And what's the very first words he said when he went to the balcony at St. Peter's after being elected Pope and greeted the world and the church in Italian, non avete paura, paura, trade pro my R. Do not be afraid. Please rise for the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only only begotten begotten Son of God, born of the Father Father before before all ages, God God from God, God, light from light, light, true God from from true God, God, begotten, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come come again again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look look forward forward to the the resurrection resurrection of the dead dead, and life life of the world world to come. come. Amen. Amen. Our loving God has given us his Son for the salvation of his people. Let us turn in confidence to our Father in heaven as we pray. Please respond, Lord Jesus, be our life. That the appointed and anointed leaders of the church will seek all the avenues that our modern technology makes available to minister to the physical, emotional, and spiritual needs of our people in the age of COVID-19. Let us pray. Lord Lord Jesus, Jesus, be be our our life. life. That those who rule and govern will embrace policies and modes of action that respect our constitutional rights while providing reasonable guidelines to secure public safety. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, be our life. That God will work a mighty work and bring forth from this time of crisis a nation more humble before him, more willing to acknowledge our need for him, and more dedicated to seeking together what enhances true human flourishing. Let us pray. Lord Lord Jesus, Jesus, be be our our life. life. That through the intercession of the Blessed Mother of God, the Lord will bless and reward our living mother for their sacrifices and love. Let us pray. Lord Lord Jesus, Jesus, be be our our life. life that the vulnerable, poor, lonely, and forgotten will receive the physical help and human compassion they need to reassure them of their dignity. Let us pray. Lord Lord Jesus, Jesus, be our life. For the grace this week to have our hearts free of worry, fear, and doubt, that we will be filled with confidence that the Lord will guide us through these challenging times. Let us pray. Lord Lord Jesus, Jesus, be our life. For the faithful departed, especially John Cherovich and Richard C. Jacko, may they enjoy the reward of heaven and join the Blessed Mother in praising her son Jesus for all eternity. Let us pray. 
Lord Jesus, be our life. For our deceased mothers, grandmothers, godmothers, and stepmothers, may they enjoy the reward of heaven and join the Blessed Mother in praising her Son Jesus for all eternity. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus be, be in our, our life. life. Almighty Father, author of all freedom and of our salvation, listen to the voice of our pleading and grant that those you have redeemed by the shedding of your Son's blood may have life through you and under your protection rejoice ever unharmed through Christ the Lord who lives with you in the Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 my sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church O oh God who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to praise you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover her has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom 
are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death and is rising. The life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts were brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks. He said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat his bread and drink his cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial, of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, 
so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Agnes, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Edward our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of the family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ the Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. My sisters and brothers, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will, will be done, done, on earth as it is, it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against us, us. and lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not in our sins and the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of his peace. Lamb of God, to take, take away, away the, the sins, sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold, Christ Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you, that you should, should enter under, under my roof, roof but only say, say the, the word and my soul, soul shall be healed.
this is Mother's Day weekend, and it's the month of May, and we Catholics honor our Blessed Mother. And so we're having a very simple uh, May crowning. And please rise, where you are out there, rise. Mary places the crown of flowers on our Blessed Mother. Now on the screen you'll see a prayer. I'll pray it now, and of course you can join me as you watch this virtually. So our prayer uh, honoring our Mary, Mary, honoring Mary, Queen of Heaven. Lord, bless us as we crown this image of the mother of your son, Jesus. Mary, virgin forever. Most worthy queen of the world, pray for our health and safety, peace and salvation. For you are the mother of Christ, the Lord and Savior of all. And we all say together, Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend, defend us, us in battle. battle. Be our, our defense, defense against, against the wickedness and snares of the devil. devil. May God, God rebuke him, we humbly, humbly pray, pray. To thou, O Prince, Prince of the, the heavenly host, host, by the power of God, Thrust in the hell of Satan, the other the evil spirits, spirits who prowl about, about the world, the world seeking the ruin, the ruin of, souls. of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We want now to bless our mothers, so if you are blessed to be next to your mother or she's somewhere in the country, put your hand towards her, wherever that might be, if she's living. And if your mother has gone back to God, we pray she's with God, go like this. Okay? Good. I'm going to do that myself. So here's the prayer. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women, that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth, and grant that we, their sons and daughters, may always honor them with a spirit of profound respect. Through Christ the Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go forth in peace, glorifying the Lord through your lives. Thanks be to God. With God's help, have a good, good day, a good week. Oh, Mary, your grief is changed.